Well, hi there. It's been a while. I hope you've been well. The content creation on this show has been a bit slow for me lately, but that's because my family is growing. Not so much in terms of quantity, but instead in terms of mass, my wife excluded. Yes, my daughter is growing up, and I'm growing out. These changes have meant me having a lot less time for video creation types of things, so those of you who are watching, thanks for hanging in there. And those of you who are new, welcome to the Uncommon Commander. Today I'm doing something new. I'm taking off my creator goggles and putting on my Deck Doctor white lab coat. This is still a deck tech, but it wasn't built by me. It was actually built by one of my friends from my playgroup. He gave me some idea of what the deck was wanting to do and asked me to take a look at it and see if I had any tips. So without further ado, here's his commander, Lanis, Cryptozoologist. Lanis is a Simic commander, costing a green and a blue to cast, and has a 1-2 body to go along with two abilities. The first ability is a triggered ability that says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. For those who aren't aware, investigate means you create a clue token. The other ability is an activated ability that says, tap Lanis and sacrifice X clues. Target opponent reveals the top X cards of their library. You may put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. My friend created a flicker deck around this with a strong degree of control and a lot of cards that can get him clue tokens. So first I'm going to show the deck unaltered as my friend built it. After I've shown all of the cards, I'm going to present my recommendations. Also, today's deck, as my friend built it, would cost you $127.93 if you were buying it from TCG Player. And if you are, please consider using my affiliate link, found in the video description. You can also support me at my small Patreon page, also linked in the video description. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to tap that like button. If you're new here, I'd be honored to also have you subscribe. Now, on to the deck tech. First up, my friend did not skimp on ramp, and that's what I like to see. His non-land ramp is Findhorn Elves, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Thought Vessel, Academy Manufacturer, which ramps in conjunction with Lanus and your other clue makers, and Magnifying Glass. The land ramp spells are Rampant Growth, Sakura Tribe Elder, Three Visits, Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Far Haven Elf, Wood Elves, and Solemn Simulacrum. So what I'm seeing here is a mix between several types of ramp. In my opinion, this isn't taking full advantage of being in green, but it does make your ramp package a bit more robust. If someone goes full Boros and destroys all of the lands, you'll still have some mana dorks and rocks hanging around. My friend also added a fair amount of spells that will get him clues, even without Lanus on the board. These are Floodhound, Daring Sleuth, who becomes bearer of overwhelming truths when flipped over, Ongoing Investigation, Trail of Evidence, Ulvenwald Mysteries, Drownyard Explorers, and Wave Sifter. The other method of obtaining clues is by flickering creatures while having Lanus in play. The bounce cards are Quickling and Teamer Sabertooth, and the flicker cards are Argent Sphinx, Conjurer's Closet, and Deadeye Navigator. We also have the flicker combo engine Ghostly Flicker and Archeomancer. I think engines are the way to go in this deck, and overall this makes for 5 flicker or bounce engines, four of which are standalone cards rather than a combo. Of course, if you're going to be making clues with your commander, you also want to have some payoff cards for doing so. My friend has chosen these. Confront the Unknown, Erdwall Illuminator, Rise and Shine, Graph Mole, Tireless Tracker, Briarbridge Patrol, Essex Fractal Bloom, and Junkwinder. I have absolutely nothing to complain about here. All of these are really good, and Rise and Shine reaches into the realms of both good and creative. I look forward to losing to it. Okay, let's talk about the control cards now. There are several types. Stacks, which are cards that can stop your opponents from doing a thing. Pillow forts, which stop opponents from attacking you. And removal spells, counter spells, and probably some other types that I'm just forgetting right now. My friend has gone into all of these here, except for stacks. Unless you count Junkwinder as stacks? Maybe. So the first control card I noticed was Dissipation Field, and this marks his only Pillow Fort card. 
He's also running the counter spells, Miscast, Counter Spell, Mana Drain, Frilled Mystic, Mystic Snake, and Confirmed Suspicions, which both counters a spell and lets him investigate three times. I know he's a big fan of creature decks, so I'm not surprised that one third of these are creatures. But this brings us to his removal package. His removal that can target artifacts and or enchantments are Nature's Claim, Expel from Raska, Thieving Skydiver, Beast Within, Raven Form, Reclamation Sage, Root Out, Acidic Slime, and Gone Missing. His removal that is strictly creature removal is Kenrith's Transformation and Amphin Mutineer. Finally, he's running the Board Wipes, Curse of the Swine, Oversimplify, and Flood of Tears. I guess thinking about it, Curse of the Swine is actually kind of somewhere between Board Wipe and Targeted Removal, but eh, such a nuance is beyond me. Now, his counter spells and flicker cards are really good at protecting his board already, but he did add in two other protection cards whose inclusions I actually really like here. Those are Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots. The reason I like these is because they also give haste. In fact, if they only gave protection, I'd probably suggest cutting them, but since Lannis has to tap to activate his ability, these become way more powerful and versatile than if they just gave Hexproof and Shroud. Most of the card advantage in this deck is being generated by Lannis and his clue tokens, but there is still a small shell of card draw here. These are Coiling Oracle, Mole Drifter, Tamayo's Journal, and Shimmer Dragon, which is an absolute house of a card. It's hard to remove, has evasion, a big body, draws cards like crazy. The card checks almost all of my boxes. And finally, we've got the land cards. This is a very simple section, so I'll show all of them at once. We've got one command tower, 17 forests, and 18 islands. So basic. Okay, so now bear with me as I give you my thoughts and suggestions on this deck. The first problem I noticed with this deck was... <laughs> there's just not a whole lot of problems for me to fix. Core, you've got really good deck building fundamentals. You've got enough ramp here, a good number of payoff cards, and redundant clue creators. A handful of flicker engines... The deck just works. That said, my friend did ask me to look for more spells that take things off of the battlefield and put them on top of his opponent's decks. He wants this because, as a secondary focus, he wants to be able to see a thing, put it on the deck, and just take it right out of their library. So I ran across a lot of options here, but my top suggestion for you would be Nevermaker. I also like Precognition a lot, but it doesn't quite do that thing that you're asking for. That said, it does tell you every turn if you want the top card of their library, and it lets you basically tuck it away if you don't want it, or if you don't want them to have it. To fit Nevermaker in, I'd suggest removing Dissipation Fields. It's your only pillow floor card, and it only sorta works. You see, you care about what's in their library, not what's in their hand. It's nice having people not attack you, but really you should be throwing down creatures of your own and then stealing theirs as well, and that should keep people from attacking you too much. I also want to recommend Submerge, if you're willing to pay the $9 to obtain it. If you are, it'll be a free-to-cast removal spell that puts the target permanent on top of its owner's library. If you don't like that price tag, then I recommend Set Adrift. You aren't running much in the way of graveyard interaction, so the delve ability should help you pay for part of this cost. Finally, since I know that you enjoy creatures, Vidalkin Dismisser is an option, though it does only target creatures, and it is expensive to initially cast. If you want to know what to cut to add any of these in, I recommend cutting from your removal as these are basically removal cards themselves. And since we're talking about removal, I did want to mention a more straightforward upgrade. I would probably remove Root Out and add in Return to Nature. Return to Nature gives you the same overall removal, but at a cheaper price, instant speed, and also has the flexibility of exiling a problem card from a graveyard. And Grave Hate is something you just don't have in here. The trade-off, of course, is that it doesn't investigate. That said, I think all of the things that it does give you outweigh that one clue token. And since I've mentioned Graveyard Hate, I also want to recommend a land that does just that. And maybe a couple other lands while I'm at it too. You've got no utility lands, so I think removing a few basic lands wouldn't hurt. I'm going to suggest that you add Scavenger Grounds, Safe Haven, and Endless Sands to your land base. They won't raise the price of the deck much either, as each of them is 60 cents or less, but they will raise the power level of your deck. 
In your counter spells package, I'd like to recommend the card Hinder. This is just a suggestion, but adds that top deck strategy into your counter spells. I felt like you could also use another card draw spell or two, and that your ramp package is really more than adequate. So I just want to recommend splitting the difference by removing one of your ramp spells and adding in Bounty of Luxa. It's an unassuming enchantment that won't see removal, but will both ramp and draw you cards over the course of a game. I personally would remove Kodama's Reach or Solemn Simulacrum. Finally, since you're running Ghostly Flicker and Archaeomancer, I wanted to at least make you aware of a redundancy to those. These are Illusionist Stratagem and Shipwreck Dowser, and they're interchangeable with their respective parts of the Ghostly Flicker Archaeomancer combo, meaning that putting these into your deck will double your chances of finding the combo. Now, I'm not sure what cards you'd definitely want to swap out for these but you do have a lot of control, so I'd maybe pick a counter spell and a removal spell to take out, or maybe choose one of the clue token generators. I'd probably want to actually playtest this a bit first to know exactly if the change is necessary and what to remove if it is. Now I mixed in my actual recommendations for changes in this deck with a few notable cards that I found while I was looking that I thought you would like, so I'll show my actual recommendations and swaps on the screen now. I put my strongest convictions at the top, and the weakest ones at the bottom. Again, I feel your deck is already very strong, especially for its price point. I view the suggestions that I made as simple fine-tuning, and they're definitely based on my own views of what's good in casual commander. And that's the show for today! If you have any helpful suggestions for the person who built this deck, please leave a comment below, as I'm sure he'd appreciate the help. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and leave a like. If it does well, I'll try to do some more like it in the future. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.